Hello, everybody. Welcome to Immigration Live, or should I say, welcome to the return of Immigration Live. We're adding these shorter videos to share insights, tips, and advice to supplement our longer half-hour in-depth Immigration Live talk shows, which will be returning shortly to Facebook. Um, my name is Carlos Batara, and I'm an immigration attorney. And if you'd like to be in, notified in advance of my live broadcast, subscribe to my page on Facebook, where I share a lot of immigration tidbits on a regular basis. Today, what I wanted to discuss real quickly was some Ohio State research. A few days ago, I posted an article um, that came from the Columbus Dispatch. It was about a research project focused on the plight of U.S. citizen children who had relocated to Mexico when their parent was deported. The article discussed the educational struggles of these children abroad. It was based on the findings of a 10-month project carried out by Ohio State Professor Sarah Gallo. The reason that this is important and the reason that I wanted to do this quick live broadcast is that for those of you that are facing hardship, and that would be in a family unity, I-601 matter, or perhaps a cancellation removal case, one of the first issues you have to address is the issue of relocation versus separation. Will the U.S. citizen spouse and children go with the immigrant if the immigrant's deported to a foreign country, or will they remain here separated? Um, if if the relocation is going to be the issue, because that's what you plan to do, then this news article, I think, is um, very critical. It, it had three key findings that you can use in your case. One, it talked about that in, in this town, there was no equivalent of what we have here in the United States, English as a second language. So the children who went there, although they could speak relatively good Spanish, um, they could not read or write Spanish. And as a result, this affected their performance in school. Um, I'm going to discuss that in more depth in a later video, in a later talk show, uh, because I think that's an important issue for all of you to bring up in your case. A second issue was uh, limited class participation. And this was more tempered by the issue of socialization. A lot, a, a lot of the American students in this, in this research project um, that were followed by uh, the Ohio State professor um, were teased, ridiculed, isolated by their Mexican peers. And the more Americanized they were, um, the more the teasing and the isolation um, was heightened. It's in, in a lot of senses, that, that, that's not surprising because it's similar to what immigrants who come to the United States face from their American peers. Uh, they too face the same kind of um, isolation and teasing and, and, uh, and being left out of, of the inner circles of, of students in, in their schools. The third issue was that of a lot of these students had to repeat grades. And again, that's not surprising. If, if a student's struggling educationally, if they feel left out socially, then of course they're gonna struggle educationally. And we certainly have seen that also here in the United States with immigrants um, that are going to American schools for the first time. They have the same kind of problems. Um, now, one might say there's possible limits on the studies. For instance, it was based on children who had only been living in Mexico two to three years, and it was based on a small town in Mexico. Uh, I tend to think that those findings, however, um, are pretty general and, and would occur regardless of whether it was a bigger city or smaller city. And once a child's behind in school, even at an early age, um, it's gonna be hard for them to get over it um, quickly. So it takes several years for children to become acclimated um, to being in a foreign environment. And again, I point to the American experience on that. So I, I just wanted to share, here's the key takeaway. If, if you're an immigrant or you're an immigration attorney, this is an issue that you wanna explore before you present your hardship case in a 601 waiver setting or in an in a immigration court deportation defense matter. Those are certainly issues that 
um, you should explore, that you should discuss in front of a judge, and that you should have a judge seriously consider. And with that, I hope I've been able to provide you with some good, quick tips and advice um, related to this article. I'm going to post the article um, that I'm referring to again um, in my notes to this to this uh, short video, and take a look at it. I think you'll find that it's a very good article and there's some very good points to raise in your own case. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you subscribe to my page where you'll be alerted to these broadcasts in advance and you can also watch the replays afterward. Thanks for watching. Know someone who might be interested in this video? Then please take a moment to like and share it with them. Also, if you would like more videos on immigration, just click on the subscribe button. And here's a little bonus, a short guide that you can download for free by clicking on the link on the description box or the square shaped image. Plus, if you have ideas for videos you'd like to see, write a short comment below or feel free to contact me at carlos at bataraimmigrationlaw.com. My name is Carlos Batara. I appreciate your time and hopefully we'll be talking again very, very soon.